Hello, welcome again. I am Monica Rose. I am from Dallas, Texas. So just to give you a little bit more information about myself, I am the region advisor and have enjoyed spending the weekend with the all district trio in this region in San Diego. And now in the District 22 area, I got a chance to drive around and learn some more about the districts and the, I've met, did I meet anyone yesterday? No, no one from district leader training, but so I'm having a chance to meet you all here tonight and then go and look at some possibilities for chartering clubs. And that's one of the things that if your interest turns into something more than just hearing what I present tonight, it will help the district as we're chartering more clubs will need sponsors and mentors to help do that. Sharon has a sign-up sheet that she's passing around. If you're interested in taking on one of these positions, please sign in with your name and just your email. availability. Well, we're just going to have email, and then I'll email you guys a link that actually has you do your availability okay. and kind of area. It's a Google form, and we don't have that set up right now. So just name and your email. I can always look it up on membership list, too, if you get kind of sloppy on your email. We'll send this around. All right. Thank you so much. Yes. And with the one sheet, the at a glance, this is at a glance of some of the duties for the sponsors and mentors that we're going to talk about in depth. But at the very top, sponsoring clubs is also something that can help in supporting clubs as we find new leads and charter them in the district. You won't really need to look at your at your one that you're at a glance sheet right now because most of those things we'll talk about in the presentation. So today, tonight, we'll hope to give you some tips on being successful as a club sponsor or a mentor. By show of hands, which area would you fall in or would you be interested in both? Well, actually, one or the other because you get credit for your advanced leader silver award. So club sponsoring, if you, we'll give you some more definitions on that, but you're, you're here for club sponsoring, all right? And sponsoring could be either looking at leads and developing clubs on your own, or once the marketing team responds to leads, then we'll go out and do demonstration meetings, and then at that point, turn it over to people who are interested in being sponsors. Or you can be for, or you can be interested in being a mentor. So club sponsors, and then club mentors. Awesome, awesome. All right. Into in the session, the objectives are to give you some definition of terms, to identify some new club obstacles, providing some interesting information for you to support the clubs as best you can in the infancy stage. Finding those things that you really need to cover and then know to back off on those, gain some insight on what your role is and how you are a reflection of the district and your support, how you can do that. And then celebrate successes. Those are all important because as you have that new member experience, the first thing, the first impression is the one that's going to be long lasting. So you're going to be that energizing person, that motivator and that encourager to let them know that what they think might be an over, overwhelming experience in the beginning will soon, settle, will soon settle down and that you're here to support them. And then your transition into your role, off your role, and into the next leaders to help. So by definition, a club sponsor is someone who starts with the club at its infancy stage or picks up from where Sharon's team takes it from a lead that we might get from world headquarters. And that term of service can last anyway, anywhere from one day to one week or in one club that I was a member of for one year. So in that time, you're still holding, you may attend the demonstration meeting or you might work with completing charter applications. Anyone familiar with going through the charter application process? I know John in the back has because he's been a district leader and, and is all involved. 
So as we go through this whole process, know that you have someone who, along with the marketing team, has the same experience on completing this paperwork. And then you share duties. You share duties with the mentoring, and you can overlap in those respects. You know, once you get to the point where it's time to bring the mentor on or you're meeting with the clubs, both sponsors and mentors can be involved in that. But you definitely have a term. Once the club charters, then your job is easy. You may have some transition where you're overlapping with the mentor, you're doing a debrief, so to speak, giving them the challenges at this point or that status of the stage in their development or giving them some successes. So the mentor knows as they're coming in, this club is excellent in one, two, three components and they just need a little bit more information and then you can take it from the rest. So do that transition. But at that point, the club charters and you send off that paperwork to Toastmasters International and it's chartered, your job is done. During that time, you will get an email from Toastmasters International that lets you know that your job is complete and you can submit your application to earn that ALS credit. And then the mentor comes in for those six months. That's a definite term. You'll work from the point the club chartered to the end of the six month period and you'll work with them on anything that they need to learn. What we have that will be available for you once you have located a club to give that mentorship to, once you are an assigned, once you are assigned in that position, you'll have different things, a whole toolkit to give you every tool that you need to be successful. It could be information such as all of the roles in the Toastmaster meeting. You can get information that gives them say for each one of the positions, the timer, the odd counter, they'll have every tool that they need to be successful. Again, that duty is shared with another person. You can have two sponsors and two mentors. If a club meets weekly and you decide that you want to serve every other week, you have a second person to be a support to you. On the opposite week, if you want to work it that way, you may not need to have two people in one meeting at the same time. And certainly as the club progresses in its age, you know, from being a newly chartered club to a more established club, you can move very quickly depending on how much information is retained and, and how much you accomplish with them. You can not go as often. So those two member mentors, maybe one may drop off and the same with the sponsorship. Maybe one or the other member may drop off, but at some time the commitment is not 100%, it's a shared duty. So if this is a little overwhelming, know that you'll have a team of people to help you and support you in signing up for sponsor or mentorship. Identifying the club needs. They're starting totally blank. They may have gotten a little bit out of the demonstration meeting, but this is a chance to start asking them what their culture is, what kinds of things that they want to accomplish. You may have a group of engineers or you may have a group of people who are very creative. And this is the point where the identity of the club is defined and you're there to help them. Now, how many members in the audience tonight, how many of you have been in Toastmasters three or more years? Anyone less than that? Okay. How many years have you been in Toastmasters? Two years? Two years? Okay, so no matter where you are in your Toastmasters education, you still have a lot to offer. Some, because you've been, been in the club so long, you may have experience with several different clubs, and you know that clubs do things differently. Every club you go into, you will find, if you go into a different club, you will find that they, they may start the club meeting off differently. Some members may do the business meeting first and then do the club meeting. But you know that you're there to listen and gently guide them along the way in the process. You know how it's done, but you won't really need to say you must do this this way because this is how we've always done it. Let the club be, let the club mold itself into what it wants to do. Now, the only rule that they really have to follow is 
the Toastmaster guidelines and you will get there's information in how to build a Toastmaster club you will have specific steps that you can go through so you will have some guidelines but the whole goal is to let them have some input in their development you want to hold their you want to hold their hand along the way but let them learn and let them do. Encourage them to, the, the officers to function in a way that you know the normal club will happen, but not handicap them. You want to have their best foot forward. And then most importantly, we always give speeches, right? But what do we often forget sometimes? Bring your manuals. Bring your manuals. And we work from the competent communicator manual, but what about the other manual? Yes. Do we use it all the time in our clubs? No. We try to, but how some, how, can we forget that sometimes? So think about creative ways to encourage them to bring both manuals. How do you, bring, how do you remember to bring both of your manuals to your meeting? Give me an example. You just always do it. You just always do it? <laughs> on my desk. I mean, things come up, so you never know. Okay. Exactly. Yes, John? One of the best ways is to have a conference competent leader evaluator role assigned in the meeting and announce it each and every meeting so that they know if you bring your manual you will get a written evaluation for it and it will encourage their participation. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one way. What's another way? That's, that's somewhat, um, what if I'm Toastmaster that week and I'm looking for different uh, roles to be filled out and out competent leadership opportunities or something like that or um, have the president announce it in the email or we'll send in the email right before um, the meeting several times throughout the week and um, right before the meeting usually. All right. So as long as you have a way, a, a mechanism to help clubs and members remember to bring both manuals, you won't have your manual if you're not speaking that day but you will always have your competent leader manual. You agree? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then when the club's charter, how many members do, would, would they normally have? 20. 20. 20. And they'll have more than that sometimes. But what happens in the first six months? It goes to five. Well, hopefully not that <laughs> drastic. But what can happen? You can lose members, right? Mm -hmm. So they're starting with 20 robust members, 20 energized and excited members. But they will lose some members. So what's one good thing to encourage them to do? Continue to build new members. Moments of truth tells us we're going to lose some members. So you get every function of the club. Every member will have an activity, whether or not they're an officer. You want to get them engaged. And then what did we talk about earlier tonight? No agendas. How does the new club know what they need to do? We have examples of Toastmaster meeting agendas. Refer, one of your main books that you'll refer to is to how to build a Toastmaster club. And that will give you examples of agendas. Sharon and I will have entire packets set up for everyone. Once you sign up and get assigned, we'll have a link for all of the materials that you'll need. So an example of a Toastmaster agenda will be provided in there. Again, this is one of those, if you have a situation where and are you in any clubs that has a Toastmaster meeting that's less than one hour? Okay, tell us what happens there with your agenda. Well, we have a weekly Thursday meeting. We actually alternate between 30 minutes and 45 minutes. And our agenda, we set up a week, well, we have a calendar set up in advance, but normally the closer we get to that week, we have to email out, change some roles. And then since we're a closed club, we can distribute that through work email. So that's kind of how we work our agendas. And then we print a couple of agendas out for each table at our actual Okay. Event. So one club that you might get assigned to, you may have to do something different. You may have to augment their meeting schedule. So the standard Toastmaster agenda that's provided might be you have you may have to alter that. So this is an, another opportunity. Talk with the club and find out what will work for them. How do, how do you get it in 30 minutes? Do you just choose to do table topics one session and speeches the next session? We actually, our, our first year, we basically, 
went with having one speaker, then going into the table topics. But then if you have pretty much an event where you lose a speaker, you can't fulfill that role, it makes your meeting pretty lackluster. So we actually switched our meeting. So our 45 minute meeting, we have two speakers. And our 30 minute meeting would be nothing but table topics. Awesome. All right, great question. And then what about table topics? There's the little cards that are the chat pack cards. There's, an, there's another tool in there There was where you, it's not the, the chat packs are the little ones, but there's another one that's about the size of a card deck. And that has another tool for you to use on table topics if that's something that you need information on helping them derive that. But if you go on the internet and you get to, there's tons. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I saw your face. That, that was a relief there because that's one thing. Now, that's one fear that I have, but that's not something that you really need to worry about setting up only just to have the tool. So that's a good thing. But you can overcome all of those. Now, getting the best bang for uh, setting up clubs to succeed, these are some of the components that we'll look at. The agendas, we talked a little bit about that identifying consistencies, the things you really want to focus on, maybe taking small nuggets at a time so where the clubs aren't overwhelmed. We can look at uh, things that you can be consistent on, but then we really want to introduce some of the details. Explain, what is clapping all about? Young lady in the front, why do we clap? Uh, to get people used to the applause, to get people used to being in a business Toastmasters is all about causing us to become comfortable. Now that's just my, my take. Okay. Any other input? Yes, John? It's encouragement to the speaker to show you that you're behind the speaker. If they're nervous, then by applauding them both before they begin and when they're finished, it's part of that recognition that all of us are after. Okay. So when you're explaining the, in the, what the clapping is, you might have to introduce the concept of, well, when you go home and take your bath and get ready for a good night's sleep and you wake up in the morning, you'll find that your biceps are sore. And then they'll remember when they go to that Toastmasters meeting, they'll know, oh, that's right, I clapped all day in that meeting. And, and that's what it's all about. But let's start with agendas explain the preparation of speeches. Let them know that each speech, you go through the manual and let them know when you prepare your speech, you're doing your Toastmaster promise and you're fulfilling your duties as a member to prepare yourself. And then they'll be working with a mentor, which would be you, or a speech mentor, which may be someone else in the club. But preparation and how that goes into the agenda can mean a whole lot of things. Showing up on time, or being prepared or letting them know where they are in the agenda. Table topics and evaluations for the same thing. There is one component that comes with the new member kits, or it used to be, it may be a link now, but it's all about evaluations. So when you get to the point of evaluations, you as a mentor can, or a sponsor, because at this point, the club may or may not have chartered. So as a sponsor, you're going in, you're doing all of the same roles as a mentor would be if, you know, in time. If, this, if the club sponsors right away, then it'll be the mentor. But if not, then you'll be performing this function as a sponsor. Evaluations, you'll be doing those because in the beginning, they may not have the skill or the confidence to do that evaluation. But along the lines of round speech three or four, or three, two or three months into the program, then you can introduce this topic. And on the agenda, you may have to alter the agenda, as we talked about earlier, to add an education component on there. This is where you spend maybe five minutes presenting a particular function of the agenda and explaining it more in depth, and then have an opportunity for questions and answers. This gives an equal exchange of information, and someone can say, oh, yes, we've been doing that right, or no, we need to regroup and rethink about how we want to do this section of our meeting. So those are educational moments. For, in, for consistencies, introductions. In the beginning, 
it may be a lot. That's why we want to go small segments at a time. But when speakers are comfortable in giving introductions or preparing introductions, then encourage them to do that. And then have a little education moment on how to do an introduction. A consistency with speakers might be if it's a new club and they're, they, if you get a consensus that all members want to give all of their icebreakers first and get them engaged early, doing that will help them get engaged early. The icebreakers, you can have three speeches at a meeting. Those are four to six minutes. So you can, in a club of 20 members, it may take a few meetings to get everyone through that process. But if you do something consistently like that, everyone can see the process. Everyone can see how an icebreaker can be an easy thing to do, or it can be uh, supportive if you're more fearful. And that gives them that bonding experience early enough to let them know that they're being supported. On the timers report, some timers. In your clubs, when, the, when you're asked to give them the timers report, do you state the times, or do you just say everyone's qualified? Time. You state the times, how many just say you're everyone's qualified? Okay. What's the difference in just saying you're qual and you're just qualified without giving the times? I think it may discourage some. Okay. Giving the actual times. Okay. So better than just saying you're qualified. I, I disagree. I think as a speaker you need to know what your time is. Because there could be that had you prolonged on a, a, a smaller area, you would have been over on your time. Okay. So I feel that is very valuable, and the speaker should know their time. And if they go over, again, as a speaker, we need to be on time and within our allowed amount of time. And if we go over, we need to know that as well, that we need to practice maybe 10 to 12 times prior to the, to the actual speech versus two or three times. Okay. To become more refined. Okay. I agree with that. I think it's just about awareness. Okay. It's just to teach you awareness of how long, just in case you have to give a presentation at work, or just give, make you aware of how long you're speaking. So it's, so you don't want to just tell them that's what it's for. Okay. It's not to judge you. It's merely to help you become, become better. better. Well, become a better speaker. Yeah, absolutely, especially for as we're talking about from our third perspective. I, I thought I was up there the whole two minutes, or even over three minutes. <laughs> After it was all over with, I was only up there like 40 seconds. Oh, wow. Forever. <laughs> 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 Okay, okay, it's all about an education moment. Remember that five minutes at the end of the meeting, we can talk about the inconsistencies with how clubs do that. But both the other side of the coin is, and I'll give you both sides, maybe in one club it's okay to not state the time because you're on a 30 minute meeting and every time the timer gets up and cites the times for each one of the components, that gnaws off minutes off your time, off your meeting, right? And then in the other one, you're in an advanced club or you're in a club that where you're working on international speeches and what happens when now rich didn't talk about it but i know some people from they they compete at the district level and when they go to the international convention they disqualify on time so if someone told them they may go over on time so when so when you're having that teaching moment and you talk about time and say when you gave that speech or if it, even if it's a humorous speech. You gave that speech, you had seven minutes and 29 seconds left. So if you know where you are in your time, you have a chance, and this is also a mentoring moment, you have a chance to say, if you see the yellow card, you should be already planning in your mind where you are in your speech. So you need to adjust so that when you're done, you're done in enough time to say, Mr. Toastmaster, and you have no questions about you qu qualifying or disqualifying. Or that it's not an abrupt ending. Because that's what, at the beginning of our club, we started doing like abrupt, like, okay, done, thanks, see ya. 
when we saw like the yellow card or the red card, we had abrupt endings, and I feel that like knowing your time kind of helps you become better at wrapping it up. Okay, I see the yellow card. I need to collect my thoughts, change this, exclude that. Right, because abrupt endings often have no conclusions. Yeah. Right. And right. Everybody's left wondering. Right. That's it. Like. Exactly. And then the same thing for voting. If you're going to vote. Try to do that consistently. If you want to not vote on the best speaker for the icebreakers at the beginning, start introducing voting when members are on their second speeches. Come up with something to where first you want to get them in, get them excited about being in the club and learning, and then say, now to challenge yourself, we're going to add the voting component. But that's just a thought. Just see what works. It may not. You may have to make adjustments along, but again, you're helping them define their culture. And introducing the details. We talked about handshakes, control at the lectern. Y you can use a symbol like, we're never going to leave the bus unattended, or no driver at the bus. Some change, you use that in your club? No. <laughs> but, it, but it's a way to show that as you're clapping members up to welcome them to the lectern or the speaking area and clap them down because they've done a great job, let them know that what we always do is that transfer. I know sometimes when I go places and you see people talking and they don't do that handshake, that Toastmaster me says, hey, what happened to the change of command? You know, it's a, it's a sign that says thank you for your time and you've done well and then you're free to be seated. Functionaries. Well, again, you'll have supporting material to help explain what the functionary roles are. And you can either do it by full sheets of paper or some people have little table tents in the front. So when I walk in the room, I know exactly what role you're holding because there's a placard in the front that says what your role is. And then your job description is on the inside face of the card. That way people know you're performing in that role throughout the meeting. Agendas, they can be, we've talked about agendas. Pretty good, right? Speech project previews, this is all done in the mentoring stage. The previews of, or the criteria, if there's questions, you know, the icebreaker is all about you. Maybe you can have an education moment to talk about the, the next speech if they're doing it as a group. And then the general evaluator is there to maybe use that moment and that may be you or someone else from the leadership team. It may be the area director to come in and help you support that meeting. But here's another time where if you don't have time to put an educational moment in, the general evaluator role is a position where you can give more information about what's to come. And in that How to Build a Toastmaster book, there is sample meeting projects for you to you can use the suggestions there, but it, it lays out six meeting agendas and it introduces that evaluation portion maybe around meeting three or four, you know, or some other things. But you have guidelines there to help you out with that. So any questions so far? I know going through this pretty quick because 40 minutes is a, is a short amount of time and I want to make sure that I've covered it well enough. So finding the bones. You're looking for leaders. If you don't have the club officers identified already, you're looking for leaders. You're encouraging members to take on certain tasks. So you know that this young man is coming to the meetings all the time, but he's, he really doesn't want to give that icebreaker. Is it OK to leave him alone for two or three meetings? Why? Because you lose him. OK. We encourage all of our new members to do the icebreakers as soon, like by their next meeting, if not for sure by the third meeting. Okay. And you know, icebreakers is about you, so you can't really mess that up too much, right? Um, and then we basically will have clusters where there's three, two or three people that are on the same number of speech. So when we do a voting, it's fair. Okay. It's you know, they're at the same level, and then they, you start to see a competition where they start to, you know, oh, yeah, that was good, I'm going to steal that <laughs> for my next one. Um, and it's kind of beautiful to watch that unfold. Okay. So. I like that. I like that. 
and, and, and also observing our members who attend regularly, you could see the Energizer Bunny. If you see somebody excited and always saying hi to people, what role would you think, in an officer role, what would you encourage them to do? Be what officer? Or? VP of membership. Absolutely. Sergeant at Arms, the first impression that would be, well, <coughs> ultimately all officers and all members, but usually the sergeant at arm is the first one you meet. And certainly if someone, if you're VP membership, then that's like, oh, here's my next member or, you know. But someone with that skill, you wouldn't ask a really, really shy person to go and do that just because you needed to fill the seventh officer role. Maybe you could encourage them to do that if they're willing to, but keep an eye out for those people who demonstrate those skills of the various officer positions. Now, if somebody, oh, I see you're thinking. Um, actually, I put a really, sh I recruited a shy person to take over the sergeant at arms, and she's just blossomed. Like, the first two or three, she was really shy. Once she did her icebreaker, she just, she takes charge. It's amazing. So, I guess, you know, maybe fill them out, but I, I wouldn't be discouraged by the shy or introverted people because maybe they just needed that. It, that, that little push. Yeah. That little push. Confidence, yes, to do it. Yeah. yeah. Very good. And then those members that might compete, as you're hearing speeches, if you have somebody that just makes you laugh just uncontrollably, what, it, what are you encouraging them to do? Humorous, Humorous speech. Mm -hmm. And you can also do that in evaluations. You gave us an excellent humorous story. I want to see you use that advanced manual on humorously speaking. So you're, you're encouraging them to complete their competent communicator, but you know that humorously speaking manual is at the advanced stage. So you're laying the foundation to say, no, it doesn't stop when you get to competent communicator. You have 15 more manuals to work through. This equals DTM, and so you're giving them something to come back for every club meeting. And then there's a section here on bylaws. When you go through that, that the, the project on how to build a club, form number five and six relate to club bylaws. And this is entirely different training session as we can go through how to charter, how to complete the charter paperwork. And Sharon will have that available at some point in the stage of your your sponsorship or you being a mentor. You can go through and help them on the bylaws. So looking for leaders who surface, those would be the leaders that come up and say, hey, I want to take charge. You can see definitely it's polarizing to see who wants to be involved in just giving speeches and who wants to be leaders. But we know that we, by going through both programs, you ultimately get to distinguished Toastmaster. Any questions on this section? All right. So you and authority going in to help the clubs, that's what it's all assigned for because you're fulfilling your leadership requirements. And one point, if you're going in and to say, this is how I want you to do it, you're going to get some kickback because people are, are paying their dues to get a great experience and they're there to learn. If it causes strife, then that's maybe a component that you know, if you step back and observe, the members will tell you what they want. So more is more at first. Give them enough information so they can hold their meetings and do it in a way that makes it comfortable for them. Now, just by question, have you been in a meeting that someone did something and immediately they were cut off and said, well, you did that wrong? Or you, you should do, yep, John's shaking his head. Resist the urge to, and step back for a moment as the meetings go through the process. Remember in your mind, you've gone to meeting after meeting, and you know this process, and you know what's comfortable for you. They don't know this. So as you're going through the meeting and you see s something that's not normal or an anomaly, someone didn't do something right, now maybe changing, the, you know, changing over leadership at the lectern might be one thing, but Certainly, if someone is up and they're doing their first evaluation and it's not quite the evaluation you thought it should be, let it, let it happen. Let the meeting go on. But on the side, after everything's done, you can say, hey, you did a great job in your evaluation. 
Next time, add just a little bit of this. The, it, you know, it's an opportunity to encourage and let that person have that flavor. So don't overwhelm them too much with all of the right things, you know, boom, boom, boom at a time. Let it happen and then discuss it. And then as the club gets more comfortable with the roles that they're doing, then, then slowly back off. Encourage them to take on the agenda planning and fill in all the roles. And you would have encouraged them to meet as officers so they know what each one of the roles are. And that's, we, we again have that in the material. You, it's, it's all outlined. And there's a beautiful check mark that says for each one of the roles, this is what should happen. And then you can check it off to know that you've completed this with the club. So having, when you see there's an opportunity for you to not be there, not, to not go every week, or to not uh, continually give information, let them figure it out, or let them, you know, if they ask you a question, you ask a question back to have them search for the answer. This helps the club know what they're doing and, and really take ownership. And that, that goes, the next step is the same, in the same vein, ve weaning club members. Having, having them step up and be more confident. I think the comment I made earlier about you, uh, you know, whoever it is going in the club and working with them and you are really directing them on how you think it should be done, that's when forced leadership is going to be a challenge. It's going to be a struggle. So let the leadership decide what they want to do because that's what a club, any decision the club makes, and you can let them know that, any decision the club makes is, is all about them. You agree? How would you feel if someone came into your club and told you, well, I don't like the way y'all give speeches, and I think y'all should do it like this because, yeah. There will be one of those members that comes in and says, you know, hopefully it's not you as a mentor, but there, there's some members that come in and say, well, I, I, you know, you don't vote on anything. I don't think y'all should be, you, you're not doing this right. And you know what happens to those members? Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And we just, you know, try to encourage that that attitude to not be in there. Because again, when you sign up as put yourself in the member's shoes, when you sign up and you pay your money on a on a uh, every six month period, if that club meeting is at lunchtime, you don't know what work day that person has. It could be a hard day, and they're using that Toastmaster meeting as a respite. This is a place to go where I can relax, I can learn, I can have fun, I can laugh uncontrollably because someone gave a humorous speech and I know I'm going because, I know I'm going to get it that day because I'm, this is humorous speech day. And then some negative in, in energy comes into that room. So protect that one hour. It should be fun. It should be enthusiastic. And then guest speakers can have an influence on the club too. Offer to bring in guest speakers if you get to the point where, okay, everyone knows, okay, this is a great speech. You guys have been doing great. Let me bring in someone like Sharon. Not Sharon, but someone like Sharon, and Sharon can come in, or you can give a speech that day. So you can show different skills and techniques. You guys have mastered this very well, but let's take it to the next level. You talked about that competition. The competition says, okay, I'm going to give you another skill because you're ready for it. So just encourage them. And then once you get to this point, you're ready to celebrate success because you've worked hard, you see the change, you see the, the opportunity for, you're encouraging them even to go out and visit other clubs. You can do that as well. But there's different areas where you can give a chance to, to do some successes. You know you're doing well. How are we on time? You think we're done? <sighs> and we should be done by when? Oh, wow, we're over. But we t we, we've already talked about a lot of this. Your, your goals for ALS, recognition, having the district leaders come in and inviting other dignitaries. Once it's time to celebrate, you guys will, are ready to go on and your mentorship is done or you've, char you've chartered your club. Basically, the rest of 
of this is learning to let go and then transitioning to either the mentor and this, this is other opportunities. Get the area director involved. The area director should be involved because that new club charter will help them be presidents distinguished. If you have any other questions, we can talk some more after the break, but it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your interest. I know this will help the marketing team so much, and we know that we're in good hands because of the awesome experience you guys shared. You gave feedback, and certainly we learned about the augmented meeting here in 30 minutes. So thank you again. I'm sorry I kept you too long, I know, but it, it's a lot to talk about. Thank you. All right. All right. But I'd also, I've been in the back of the room. Some of you haven't seen me. Some of you don't know who I am. Many of you do. I'm John Mulroy. I'm a past district governor a couple of times. Been there, done that, <laughs> known Monica for a few years. And what I'd like to do also, I'm going to be working with Sharon perhaps on de helping develop this program for the district. I'm haven't committed. <laughs> I got to talk to my better half, okay? But um, I'm going to give each of those of you that don't already have it, I'm going to give you my business card. So if you have any questions about club sponsorship, mentorship, even club coaching, I've done all of it, okay? Feel free to give me a call. Communicate with me. And, and I have a card as well. Share okay. any experiences yeah. or knowledge Thank you, Mary. That I have. Thank you. Thank you okay. for your support. I'm doing fine. Hi, thank you.